Concept 33 notes, right triangle trigonometry. Let's start with getting down some vocabulary definitions and formulas. Know that through these notes you may need to pause the video to give yourself time to get down the notes that you need to. So the first term is right triangle. A right triangle is a triangle that has one right angle and a right angle is a 90 degree angle. We're going to be working with right triangles in this section. When you draw a sketch of a right triangle to indicate the 90 degree angle you simply put a box at that corner. The next definition is trigonometric or you can just say trig functions or ratios. Remember that a ratio is something compared to something else using division. So for example, 2 over 3 is a ratio. So trig ratios are ratios of the lengths of sides of triangles. There are six trig ratios or functions that we use. The main three that we use, we give them their own specific name, is the sine ratio, the cosine ratio or function, and tangent. And then the lesser three, which are the reciprocal, or the flip of the first three, are cosecant, secant, and cotangent. I'll get into specifically what the side lengths are for each of those ratios further on in the notes. The next formula to get down is the Pythagorean theorem, which you learned in geometry. Uh, this theorem shows the relationship between sides of a right triangle. So the way that <clears throat> we say it is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And that's where a and b represent lengths of the legs of a right triangle. And then side length c is the hypotenuse. Remember in a right triangle that the legs make up the 90 degree angle and the hypotenuse is the angle that is across from the 90 degree angle. The next definition to get down are special right triangles. These are right triangles that have angle combinations that are common. So one of the angle combination is 30, 60, 90 and then the next angle combination is 45, 45, 90. The last definition is angle of elevation. An angle of elevation is an angle that is formed with a horizontal line or the horizon and opens upward. Here is a picture of an angle of elevation. So you can see the horizontal line, you can see the angle, and that this is formed by moving upward from that baseline. So that is called the angle of elevation. It's an angle that's formed as you look upward. Now let's go back to those trig functions. In the box in your note, you can see that now I have shown you exactly what are the side lengths that make up each of those ratios. Now, we use defin er, abbreviations, but we don't ever read the trig functions by their abbreviation. We use their full name. So this first function is the sine function, or sine. So even though you see S-I-N, you're going to read it using its full name, sine. Now, these are always in terms of an angle. So you will either see a symbol that stands for an angle, and in this case, this is a Greek letter theta, so we say the sine of theta, which just means some angle, equals. And then these are the two side lengths that make up that sine, uh, sine ratio, the opposite over the hypotenuse. Now what this means is if I had a right triangle, and one of my acute angles was named theta, then the sine of theta, and let's just put some lengths to this right triangle, would be the ratio of 
the sign length that is opposite, so I look directly across. So that is opposite 4 over the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always across from the 90 degree angle. So that is the sine of theta. So you always start with an angle and then you move from the angle. Cosine of theta, now it, you'll see it as COS, but you read it cosine of theta. So this is the ratio of the side that is adjacent compared to the hypotenuse. So over here on our example triangle, the cosine of theta would be the side that is adjacent or touching the angle that's not the hypotenuse. So 3 and then over the hypotenuse. Tangent of theta, and again, you'll see it as tan, but you read it, tangent theta, is the side length that's opposite over adjacent. So if we look at our example triangle, the tangent of theta, the side that's opposite, which is directly across from it, is 4. The side that's adjacent, which is the one that's next to, that's not the hypotenuse, is 3. So the tangent ratio, theta, is 3 fourths. Now cosecant, secant, and cotangent, so let me say those again so you can see the abbreviations. CSC is the abbreviation for cosecant. SEC is the abbreviation for secant. And COT is the abbreviation for cotangent. These are simply the reciprocals of sine, cosine, and, se uh, and tangent. So all you have to do is just flip. So notice here that those side lengths are flipped. So rather than opposite over hypotenuse, we have hypotenuse over opposite. And that is how I remember them. I remember which ratios are reciprocals of the main three. I think of them in pairs, sine and cosecant, cosine and secant, tangent and cotangent. Now let's start solving some problems using all that information <laughs> that you've been given. So in example one, you're asked to find trig ratios given two sides of a triangle. <clears throat> So we notice by the picture that we've got a right triangle because of that box in the corner. We notice we have two side lengths, but in order to find all of the six trig ratios, which are sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, cotangent, we need to know all three lengths. So the first thing we're going to do is use the Pythagorean theorem to find the hypotenuse. So a squared plus b squared, we can just put in 5 squared plus 12 squared equals c squared. 25 plus 144 is c squared. So 169 is c squared. We'll take the square root of both sides. Since it's a length, we only want the positive root. So our hypotenuse is 13. Now we know all three lengths and write all six trig ratios. Let's start with the main three. So sine of theta, look over at your notes. Remember that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. We look at our triangle to see where theta is. It's right there. So our side that's opposite is 12, and our, our hypotenuse is 13. Now we'll find the cosine. So put your eyes back on the angle. The side that's adjacent is the one that's next to it or touching the angle that's not the hypotenuse, so 5 over the hypotenuse. And then finally the tangent, and notice I always write that angle symbol next to it because I'm finding the tangent of that angle is the opposite side over the adjacent side, so 12 over 5. Now I do the lesser 3. And I just make my work easier. So the first is cosecant. 
and I simply flip sine. So rather than 12 over 13, it's 13 over 12. The secant of theta is the reciprocal of cosine. So instead of 5 thirteenths, it's 13 fifths. And cotangent is 5 twelfths. Now these ratios, sine, cosine, tangent, and the lesser three, are used in triangle problems to, si to, to solve for missing lengths and angles. If you're wondering, why do we have to know this? And they're also used um, in real life because you can use um, these to find what we call indirect measurements. So things that you can't physically measure, so tall buildings, you know, across lengths across rivers, you can use trig um, to measure those lengths. Let's continue with the next example and find the six trig ratios, which we know are sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent given two sides of the triangle. Notice it's a right triangle, so we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the third side. <clears throat> this is what we call a Pythagorean triple. That means common lengths of sides given. I know, just because I've done these problems before, that my hypotenuse is going to be 5. If my legs are 3, and then my hypotenuse will be 5. But let's do the math so you can see it. So we'll take 3 squared plus 4 squared, and that equals c squared. So 9 plus 16 is c squared. 25 is c squared. Take the square root of both sides, so c equals 5. Now let's find the main 3. So the sine of theta, you put your eyes on theta, and then you look opposite which is the length from the middle of the angle straight across. So that's 3 over the hypotenuse, which is 5. Put your eyes back on the angle, and we'll find the cosine. So it's the side that's adjacent next to over the hypotenuse, which is 5. And then finally the tangent of theta, which is the side that's opposite, which is 3 over the side that's adjacent, which is 4. Now, make your work easier. Let's just use the reciprocal of these to find the lesser 3. So cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. That's 5 thirds. Secant of theta is the reciprocal of cosine. So that's 5 fourths. Cotangent is the reciprocal of theta. And that is 4 thirds. So you can see in this section that you're going to need to do some memorizing. If you haven't memorized these trig functions already. You might have done that in geometry, but if you haven't, then you'll need to memorize um, sine, cosine, tangent, and then which trig functions are reciprocals of, of those. So sine and cosecant, cosine and secant, and tangent and cotangent. Now in example two, let's find the five trig ratios given one trig ratio already. So our directions say use the Pythagorean theorem to find the missing side length, then use the triangle side lengths to find the other five trig ratios. So the sine of some angle is 4 sevenths. So let's work backwards, and we know this is a right triangle. So let's just make one of those acute angles, we'll call it theta. So if the sine of theta is 4 sevenths, that means 4 is the opposite length of the opposite side. 7 is the length of the hypotenuse. So now we need to find, we'll call this side B. So we know that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So 16 plus B squared equals 49. We'll subtract 16 from both sides. So 49 minus 16 33, and then we'll take the square root. Now, we don't want to estimate. We want to do what's called leave it in an exact value. So the square root of 33 is 5.74 something, but we're not going to estimate. We're just going to leave the length as the square root 
of 33. We won't estimate or round unless we're asked to. Okay, so now we know that this length, b, is the square root of 33. So I'm just going to write that right here on my triangle. Now we'll find our functions. We know what sine is. I'm going to just go ahead and write it down. Cosine of theta. I'm going to put my eyes on the angle and then it'll be adjacent, which is the square root of 33 over 7. Tangent of theta is the side length that is opposite, which is 4, over adjacent, which is the square root of 33. <clears throat> now, I don't want to leave a square root in the denominator, so we're going to rationalize. This is something you learned from Algebra 1 you might have reviewed in geometry. So when we rationalize, we take the top and bottom of our ratio times that square root on the bottom. So on top we'll get 4 times the square root of 33 over 33. Now let's find the lesser functions. So cosecant is the reciprocal, so that's 7 fourths. Secant is the reciprocal, so that's 7 over the square root of 33, but I want to rationalize, so I'll multiply top and bottom by square root of 33, so we'll get 7 times the square root of 33 over 33, and then cotangent of theta, and I'll look at my original here, and I'll just take the reciprocal, so that's the square root of 33 over 4. Here we have what we call those special right triangles. So these are right triangles that have just a um, certain combination of angles. So here we've got a 30-60-90 triangle, and here we've got a 45-45-90 triangle. Now on the lengths, labeled on the lengths of the sides of these triangles are just the reduced common numbers that correspond to these lengths. So you can think of them in terms of a ratio. So in a 30, 60, 90 triangle, their side lengths are in the ratio of one length from the 30 to square root of 3, or you can think of it as 1 times the square root of 3, to 2, or 1 times 2. In a 45, 45, 90 triangle, they are in the ratio of 1 to 1, so the sides across from the 45 angles, and then to the square root of 2, or 1 times the square root of 2. Now here's how you can use that to solve a problem with a, one of those triangles. So we've got this triangle. Right away we can see it's a 30, 60, 90, because we have the 30 and the 90 angles labeled, so this one has to be 60. <coughs> So I'm going to write a ratio of those two side lengths, x over 8. And I look at, I see that my x length is the one that is across from my 60. So I go to my triangle and I look at what side length is across from 60 and that's the square root of 3. And then 8 is across from my 90 degree angle, so the side length that's across from my 90 degrees is 2. So those two lengths are in the ratio of the square root of 3 to 2. Now we've got a proportion. So we can do cross products. So we'll get 2x equals 8 times the square root of 3. And we can solve. So 8 divided by 2 is 4. So the length of that side, missing side, is 4 times the square root of 3. <clears throat> These notes are going to be in two parts. So this is the end of part 1. Make sure that you find the video for part 2 and take the rest of the notes for concept 33.